Hi, I'm Kelvin, the See Here Love Studio Floor Manager, and today we celebrate International Day of the Girl. We hear the honest struggles that girls are facing around the world. Melinda interviews an expert panel on how we can empower girls and ensure that their basic human needs and rights are met. And Melinda heads out of the studio to interview mums at a backyard lunch on how they're ensuring that their teenage daughters are seen, heard, and loved. That's coming up. Well, thanks, Calvin. We're going to need both men and women to work together to ensure that our girls are equipped, empowered to live a life of courage, resilience, and opportunity. We also need to ensure that every girl's human rights are met, and we have a lot of work to do, and that's why I love this topic today as we celebrate International Day of the Girl today and all week. You know, this day aims to highlight and address the needs and challenges girls face while promoting girls' empowerment and the fulfillment of their human rights. I can get behind that because I was once a girl and I know the importance of what this day means and I hope you will too. So on our social media platforms, we ask teenage girls from all over the world to share with us their real struggles they are facing today. They sent video clips and emails to us and this is what they had to say. Hi, my name is Abby and I'm 18 years old. The thing that I struggle with the most at my age is being a perfectionist because I always want everything I do to be perfect and when it's not I get really stressed and I overwork myself trying to ensure that every single little detail is perfect which ends up just leading to burnout so I see that's definitely the thing I struggle with the most. Hi, I'm Charlotte and I'm 18 years old and the one thing that I think I struggle with the most at my age and in the past is definitely confidence, um, not necessarily based on the way I look but um, confidence in my faith and just being outspoken about it um, because I don't think that's something that's really stressed at this age. Hi, I'm Summer, I'm 13 years old and I live in South Korea. Some things I struggle with at my age are having strong emotions that I don't always feel like I can control. One thing I struggle with the most at this age would be time management. As a teenager, there are so many things I want to do, but since I'm still in high school, there are a lot of assignments to finish before being able to do what I love, like to sing, to act, to create artworks, or to bake, and more. One thing I always struggle with is feeling comfortable and loving who I am. A lot of times I'm around different people with different styles and different personalities. And it's like I take on a bit of who they are to feel like I fit in. Thankfully, during this quarantine, I've been able to listen and learn about myself and find and love what's unique about me. Wow, lots of hard things to hear from the girls. Um, perfection, social media, sharing faith, struggle. And I'm so glad that I have brought an expert panel to help me and to discuss how we can ensure our girls are equipped and empowered today. So joining me is Sunali Swaminathan from International Justice Mission Canada. We have Don Griffith, who is the CEO and director of the Family Enhancement Center. And Cheryl Nemhard, uh, co-host and social justice advocate, as well as an ambassador and board member of Brave Global. Thank you, Dawn, Sonali, and Cheryl, for being on the show today on such a great day, uh, International Day of the Girl. Welcome. Such a great day. Yeah, it's such a great day. I want to start off with this question. Um, from your own work and personal experience, why is it so important to have a day like this, to have an International Day of the Girl to recognize girls around the world? Sonali, let's start with you. Why is this day important? Sure, sure. Um, I think it's important because it shows girls they are worthy, they they are valued. Um, I think it's easy to um, to to kind of miss that, to not see yourself represented, and and this is just raising uh, awareness for all of those issues that we as women and girls go through, um, and it's saying you're important. 
you matter. Um, and we need to recognize that and we'd like to hear from you. Amazing. It's great. Don, why is today important? Yeah, I think, you know, I'd like to echo, echo Sonali that I think, you know, girls are, girls are so important and they play such an important role as, you know, as we age and become women, that there's so much that we can impact. And I think that girls have a unique perspective on the world that, you know, that I think boys and men aren't aware of. And, um, and a lot of the issues that, you know, that women face um, I think we're we're going to be the ones that have to that have to jump in and make that make that change. So I think it's great if we can hear hear girls' voices, hear their situations, and see how how we can change the world to make that uh, a better experience for all of us. Yes, agreed. Cheryl, your thoughts? Yeah, girls are the future, and you know this is about being intentional and giving them language that they may not have heard or uh, received in their own environment, that the fact that they're change makers. I don't think girls understand the power they have in their voice. And what a great day to just give them that affirming language. Yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanna start with some specific questions and Sonali, you're up first. One of, one of the um, important things is how can we ensure that girls live free from gender-based violence and harmful practices? That's a key one, especially around the world. What would you say from the work you do at IJM? That's a, that's a great question, uh, Melinda. So, you know, there are more than 570 million women and girls who are subject to gender-based violence each year, according to the World Justice Project. So it's certainly not a small problem. Um, and I think the real question behind that question is why does it happen in the first place? Um, and many women and girls are living in countries where there isn't a justice system that protects them from that abuse. Um, in fact, the abuse is normalized and, and it should never be seen as normal. Mm. Um, in an international justice mission, um, we're working with local governments and law enforcement uh, to help protect women and girls from that violence and abuse. So in India, we're combating sex trafficking. In the Philippines, you know, we're, we're fighting online sexual exploitation of children. In uh, Latin America, we're working to uh, combat sexual violence. And really, the theory of change here is very simple. When laws are enforced, the violence stops. Mm. Um, when justice systems protect women and girls, and when uh, slave owners or traffickers or criminals are unable to exploit without consequence, we will see a decrease in the violence. That's why I love the work of IJM. Um, I love what you do, and I think that's exactly it. We need to put those in place so that we ensure that people that who are perpetrators and who have violent behavior, there are consequences. So thank you, Sonali. Dawn from the Family Enhancement Center. You work with a lot of youth and in a lot of areas of mental health and things, but how can we ensure that girls learn new skills towards the futures they choose? Yeah, and I think that mental, mental health is foundational. And I, I think that a lot of times it's, uh, people, because because not everybody does it, they think, well, if I can manage, then everybody, that should just be a skill that we're born with that we know how to manage. But um, as we've heard, some people are going through situations that are not normal and that nobody should have to go through those. And so I think that, you know, to maintain positive mental health for girls and for women is, um, is just so paramount that um, when they, even from the girls that we heard from before, like the, all the issues that they're facing, all the uh, all the things that come through that uh, if uh, th those are the things that they it's best to have somebody to talk to to be able to figure that out and instead of just left left on your own there's a lot of shame that gets put on women there's a lot of um, you know judgment that gets put on them and um, you know and I think that I think that we have to focus on mental health even if you look at something as simple as self-esteem the the statistics will show us that you know boys and girls they have about the same level of self-esteem um, when they're children, but once they reach about the age of 13, um, boys continue to go up and girls will start to dramatically decrease um, based on the situations that they're in. And I think that, I think that there's a lot, of, a lot of messages about who they're supposed to be and how they're supposed to, to work in it and um, that, that they need to sort of figure that out. And so for, to ensure that the girls learn new skills, towards the future yeah. they choose. It's the listening, leading by example, and giving them the skills and the ways to do that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That I think it's, you know, there is there is a lot of skills and it's not about um, condemning or anything. It really is just about learning and going with their strengths yeah. and, and <laughs> helping them through. Fantastic. Cheryl, 
uh, this question, how can we ensure that girls lead as a generation of activists accelerating social change? And I know that's right up your alley. Absolutely, super passionate about that. And that's one of the reasons I love Brave. You know, they focus on at-risk girls that have gone through trauma and tragedy, low income, uh, you know, sexual trafficking. And I think, I think bravery in the time of adversity leads to a life that is extraordinary. And if we don't cancel these kids out and write them off, but actually show them that what pains them can prompt them to action, mm -hmm. it's a different perspective. And so these amazing kids are learning how to use their life experience to now be a voice for change. And so I would say to any girl that's listening, number one, there's power in your voice. I wanna affirm your voice. Your voice is connected to a generation, to a movement, and when you open it, there is a shaking that happens on the earth. You gotta know that. The other thing is I wanna encourage women, girls to, and women, because we struggle with this, we gotta yeah. work together. We've got yeah. to work together. We are stronger together, better together, and there is strength in numbers. And then I think the last thing is, um, to understand that, you know, what, what seems like little is so much. I've heard so many amazing things from our panel. And I think that every girl needs to know that what they think is just what difference can I make? Uh, can I even, is my voice even uh, going to make a difference? Absolutely. It will. Yes. Uh, a, a small change can be seismic, yeah. right? Love that. Thank you, Cheryl. I love how you answered these questions for all of you in, in your work and personal experience with girls. Let me just finish with this. What do you wish you knew or experienced as a girl that you believe would have helped you flourish and thrive as you grew into an adult? We don't have a lot of time, but what would you say? John, why don't we start with you? What do you wish you knew? I would, so I wish, I wish somebody had said, you know, don't let other people, um, tell you who you are and what you're capable of that that's you know I think that would have been that would have been it would have saved me a lot of years <laughs> it would have saved me a long time if I'd have known that wow that's that is that's powerful thank you Don Sunali um I think I wish I I had heard someone say we're not living in a time of scarcity we're living in a time of abundance we can have all women thriving and all girls thriving and achieving their dreams it's not just one or two girls Every girl has the opportunity to do that and should have the opportunity to do that. Wow. Feeling the power here. Cheryl, <laughs> what do you wish you knew or experienced as a girl? Oh, it would have changed everything. Girls are not your enemy. They are your tribe. And I'm telling you, we are a force when we're together. Amazing. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. That's great. I love it. And I'm so glad that you as girls to women are where you're at now to influence hundreds and thousands of young girls uh, here in Canada and around the world. So thank you so much, Sunali, Don, and Cheryl. Cheryl, I know you'll be back with us sharing from the good word later on, but thank you for your thoughts, your incredible work, and all that you're doing to empower our girls for the future. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thanks Melinda. Melinda, it's Francis here, and on this International Day of the Girl, I thought it would be great to give space to Paula Sampang. Paula is an intercultural studies student at Ambrose University and someone that I've been in a remote mentoring relationship with. As a young leader, Paula is passionate about empowering and affirming girls around the globe. So how fitting would it be to hear from someone like her on this day? Let's hear from Paula now. In the majority of our world today, Girls are still seen as inferior and less capable. These discriminatory belief systems can devastate how a girl experiences life. Today, over 140 million girls are missing as a result of sex selective abortion and female infanticide, meaning that girl babies are losing their lives solely because of the gender that they were born with. If a girl survives to the age of six, she should be sent to school. However, if she is not allowed to attend school where she is from, or if her family can only afford to send her brothers, she joins the 130 million girls that are not in school. This means that she is at risk for several forms of exploitation, child labor, child marriage, and even sex trafficking. If she is spared from this exploitation, then she is still susceptible to becoming one of 20 girls that experience four sex, or one out of three girls who have gone through female genital mutilation. 
this is what International Day of the Girl Child is about. To raise awareness of the gender-based challenges that girls face all around our world. But that isn't all that this day is about. I believe that empowering girls and protecting their human rights is a huge investment towards a flourishing world. Research says that simply investing in girls' education lowers child marriage rates, lowers child mortality rates, and increases the growth of the nation's economy. Girls are far from powerless victims. They are gifts to the world that should be seen as worthy of an education, worthy of championing their dreams, worthy of protection from violence. Let's see our girls for who they truly are and allow them to make the unprecedented impact they were made for. I wanna close with a quote from Malala Yousafzai, who was shot by the Taliban for advocating for girls' education. She survived and said this, there are two powers in the world. One is the sword and the other is the pen. There is a third power stronger than both, that of woman. I hope that as you've heard about both the realities and the progress made through the International Day of the Girl, that you would commit to seeing and developing the powerful potential that exists in every girl so that indeed, our voices would contribute to our equal future. So as much as I love the studio, and I really do, I also love getting out and meeting people where they are at, especially at their home in their backyards. So earlier this month, I went to my girlfriend Sandy McGregor's home to hang out with some moms and socially distanced, of course, to chat with them about how they are empowering and encouraging their daughters and their hopes for the next generation. Hey Melinda, I'm so excited to host you and my girlfriends right here in my backyard. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me in the backyard of Sandy's house. And I'm so glad that you're here for International Day of the Girls. We celebrate girls all over the world. So I'm so glad that you're all here. You're all moms with daughters, so this is perfect. And I wanna ask you this first question. And that is, as a mom of a daughter, how are you ensuring that they are strong, resilient, loving, and that you are empowering them to be the best that they can be? Sandy, why don't we start off with you? Uh, what are your thoughts uh, for that question? The first thing that comes to my mind is having a place that is safe for them at home in, in our family context so that they're learning how to be resilient and strong and kind in the context of their own sibling relationships. That's where it begins is at home. And it's a safe place because they, they can fail and they can succeed and through all those experiences, we're there with them, right? Alongside of them, encouraging them and most of all, undergirding them with prayer. That is really significant and letting them know that the lies that society is telling them, they don't need to believe those lies and I wanna be right there listening to them and hearing them and strengthening them, so, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I first told them that I myself is not perfect and um, she can be just as vulnerable as she needs to be, being transparent. She doesn't have to pr pretend to be strong and got it all together. And I'm with her as we learn together how to be strong, how to ultimately um, snuggle to Jesus for strength and, and the love that comes from him. It's not from ourselves. I think early on, my oldest girl is 21, and I think early on I figured out quickly that the pressure to be enough as a mom, um, you're never gonna be enough. And so um, my prayer became, um, I never wanted to be in the way of my girls coming to the Lord and knowing the Lord. And um, I never wanted to get in the way of the work that he wanted to do in them. And so I would say that it's kind of that being there, being present, being available and getting out of the way um, just to make sure that he's working in them the way he wants to. Um, I think for my husband and I, we make sure she knows how much we love her and that it doesn't matter what people say or um, whether people accept her or not, that for us she's important and she's worth more than anything and encourage her discipline as we go along pretty much. 
good. So I think for my husband and I, we're trying to point out our daughter's strengths and their weaknesses. Um, we encourage their strengths. One is a natural born leader, another is really empathetic and sensitive, and we want them to grow into that. Um, so embracing their differences and their strengths, and then working with their weaknesses, but loving them through it is uh, how we're doing. Thank you. So it's definitely not perfect, and it is a process, but I trust her implicitly, and I think she feels that through many things. I feel trust is huge, and also communication, just keeping the lines open all the time. I say no one has your back more than Mama Bear, and I'll look after you. And uh, yeah, I feel like just tell me, never be afraid to talk, right? That's the key, communication, and I put my full trust in you. Thank you. Well, my daughter is still very young, so at this stage, at one year old, I try to make sure that she's acknowledged, that she's seen, that she's loved, and that the love that we have for her is um, a safe environment, and that she, ultimately, my goal is that she understand that the love that we have for her really is strong, but um, that she trusts that God loves her more, and that we are here for her, but that God is her ultimate um, father well as a, a mother to my daughter I I do my best to uh, model God's love um, to constantly remind her of truth that she can make mistakes that she can be unique um, and that her the love that I have for her as well as uh, the love that the Lord has for her is unconditional so no matter what she does whether no matter what she strives for um, that it's just not conditional she can be herself Hey Melinda and hey to the ladies in the backyard. I hope you guys are having a blast. I'm so excited to talk to you today about being bold in your purpose and your assignment. And today's text comes from Acts 18 verses 1 to 11, but we're going to focus in on verses 9 to 10. Now a quick backstory for you. Paul is traveling from Athens to Corinth and he meets up with a couple friend, uh, Aquila and Priscilla, and together they are preaching the gospel to the Jews. The Bible says every Sabbath Paul does this, but he's met with rejection, opposition, and insults, and he is getting weary. The work is hard. Along come his boys, Silas and Timothy, and he's inspired and motivated, the Bible says, to preach every day in the synagogue, but still rejection, still opposition, still insults. And the Bible says that he makes a historic history changing decision. He decides that he will shake the dust off his clothes, no longer preach to the Jews, and he will preach to the Gentiles. And wow, what a decision that is, because we are the beneficiaries of that as Gentiles. Here's what the Lord says to him in verse 9. Do not be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent, for I am with you, says God, and no one will attack you and harm you, for many people in the city belong to me. Amazing. And I want to leave four points with you real quick from that story. Number one, be faithful to the things that God has called you to, no matter how it's received, no matter what the optics are, do the thing that God's called you to do. Number two, find your tribe, find the people that will inspire you and motivate you when work and life gets hard, that will help you to produce at a high level like Silas and Timothy. Three, do not be afraid of rejection and closed doors, because like Paul shifting from the Jews to the Gentiles, that decision might change the history of your life. It might be the very thing that God's called you to do. And lastly, the words of the Lord are your anthem today. Do not be afraid, whether it's speaking to social justice, speaking truth to power, being the change you want to see in the world. God says, I am with you. Speak out. Don't be silent. And there are more for you than against you. You got this. I wasn't always a TV host and executive producer, and I didn't always have a platform for my voice. And if it weren't for courageous leaders who mentored me, who took a chance on me, who gave me opportunities to lead, who allowed my voice to be heard, who believed in the gifts and passion God has given me, if it weren't for them, not only would See, Hear, Love not exist today, but neither would the thousands of diverse voices worldwide who, thanks to your support, are choosing lives of justice, love, kindness, inclusion, and courage. And this is only made possible by viewers, listeners, and supporters like you, leaders like you. 
Now through TV, podcasts, radio, YouTube, and video streaming, there is no limit to the millennials and so many others we can reach with God's transformative love and the truth that they are seen, heard, and deeply loved by God. Our community needs you. We need your leadership, your wisdom, your perspective, your voice. We need you. Donate today. Visit seeherelove.com slash give. Check out the See Here Love podcast and get the backstory. Good job. Get the inside scoop on real issues and real answers on common challenges we all face in relationships and in life. Find See Here Love on Apple Podcasts. What can older generations do to help us? So I would say the biggest thing for youth is hearing them out. I know currently I am the CEO and co-founder of Accesso, which is a youth-led organization that focuses on making Toronto more wheelchair accessible. And we find that we get shut down by adults all the time before they can even hear what we want to offer them or what we are asking from them just because they think we're too young to be doing what we're doing. So I would say just the ability to hear us out with an open mind. One thing I think that older women can help with that and um, really contribute to that fundamental aspect of your faith, being confident and outspoken and sharing the gospel, it's definitely just simply by leading by example. Um, I know that this age is really impressionable, um, and if we have bad examples, then that's what we're going to follow. But I think that if older women really step up and show us how to do that, show us how to be confident in sharing the word of God and be confident in ourselves, um, I think then that's something that we'd definitely be appreciative of and we'd be able to follow. Older generations can help me by understanding that I'm not always in control and sometimes I over-exaggerate my emotions. They can show understanding by being patient, compassionate, supportive, loving, graceful, and praying with me so I don't always feel like I'm alone. This can help me to feel empowered and stronger. So, what I think the older generation can do to help girls feel more empowered is to accept and normalize differences. Accepting and normalizing girls wearing baggy clothes, having buzz cuts, not wanting kids. Accepting and normalizing differences like these can cause such a beautiful change. Wow, did you get that? When you listen to the girl clips on how we as an older generation can help girls, we need to listen, lead by example, mentor and trust them. We need to be better. I need to be better. And we need to be intentionally supporting our girls, our daughters, those we lead on teams who are in our youth groups at church, listen, learn, and amplify their voices. So thankful for Cheryl for your good word and to the Mom's Backyard Hangout that shared and to Sonali and Don for your expertise, thank you. And to all the girls who submitted their thoughts, we want you to know that we are going to work hard at loving you the best that we can, empowering you to shine and to thrive and to flourish. You are our legacy. You are our hope. Well, for more information about the show, guests and topics, go to seeherelove.com. And for more interviews and behind the scenes, go to our YouTube channel. So much extra footage in there. And don't forget to sign up for our weekly newsletter and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And to all the girls out there, we see you, we hear you, we love you, and know that you are also seen, heard, and deeply loved by God. Happy International Day of the Girl. Bye-bye. Hey, it's Kelvin again. Don't forget to sign up to be a See Here Love host for the day. Take over Melinda's chair at seeherelove.com slash takeover.